Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. And welcome to Med School Deep Dive, where I interview different medical students from different med schools around the Philippines about their experiences of being a student in their respective med school. But before we start this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it really does support the channel. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. So hey guys, now I'm joined by Bea the, of the YouTube channel Basecapades. So uh, Bea, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Hey everyone, my name is Bea Florqui. I am a second year med student from Cebu Doctors University. And yes, I have a YouTube channel, so go check that out. Oh, my pre-med course is Bachelor of Science in Physical Therapy in the same school in Cebu Doctors University. I graduated in 2018, and I took a gap year after. To kick things off, Bea, I was like, uh, why did you decide to attend CDU? I guess that's why I attended CDU, because it was really flexible, I guess. Like, a lot of, we have um, our president in our school actually... Um, encourage everyone to balance everything, I guess. Like, he wants us to be active both academically and also for our extracurricular. And then I wanted that, um, I wanted that when during the interview, they were so welcoming and then they were so encouraging that, you know, everyone has potential and then they don't scare you that med is um, just studying a lot or just, being in the hospital a lot and reading books. So I guess for me, that was one of the things why I chose the school that I am in now. And yeah. <laughs> so, but like, I know there are like other med schools also in, in the Cebu area. So like, why not like CIM? Or I think like there's also uh, Southwestern University. Um, actually, both of my parents are doctors and they took medicine in Cebu doctors as well. So... Yeah, they, they, they told me to take it still on the same school since um, I already studied my pre-med there. And uh, I really wanted to study at CIM before. But then I, I, they were always telling us that people don't have time anymore for other stuff. And I don't know. I, 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 can't, I, I just wanted... Um, uh, what do you call that? Like, just to ease into med school instead of just, you know. Did you ever consider, like, going to a med school in uh, Metro Manila? Oh, yeah. Actually, I applied for a school in Manila. But mm. then, you know, my, my parents didn't want me to study in Manila. Yeah, that's <laughs> so understandable. That's why I didn't... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I did apply. And I really wanted actually to study in Manila for the change of scenery, I guess. But mm -hmm. yeah, wala lang. Well, Did it's you... it's fun like once when your house is near to your school. Because uh, hassle yung Metro Manila traffic. Eh. Yeah. Uh -oh. But then uh, also, um, I am not actually from Cebu, but ah. yeah, I am currently in Eastern Samar. Ah, okay. And I guess Cebu is also near, since it's still in the Visayas region, that's why they chose to, well, I studied in CDU. Yeah, it's close to home. Like, you know, it's like, it's, you're basically in the same campus. So, um, how would you describe the experience of studying in CDU? It's like, what's the school curriculum like? So, in, CD, in CDU, or Cebu Doctors University, University College of Medicine, so we have what you call um, a problem. Uh, we have PBL, and then we the subjects that we only have there are three for first year, and then there are two right now for second year. So that's the only subject. Like we're not like other schools, but there are a lot of other subjects. So what we focus on, like there are three. So BBS, PDR, and for if you're a first year, you have your medical perspective. So for BBS, that's your basic biomedical sciences. And that's where everything comes in. Like, example, for first year, we have your anatomy, physiology. But then what we do is instead of we have individual subjects for each, um, we it's integrated, I guess, because we have a case-to-case -case basis. For example, we open a case today, and it's about, um, let's say, your urinary system. 
we discuss everything about the urinary system from the from the anatomy to the physiology to the biochemistry everything like it's it's just in one case i guess that is how we do it at cdu um, uh, so parang so parang like you're you're introduced to it through a real world problem and then from there yeah. you you go into the specifics of it yeah um Actually, what um, there are, we are divided into groups. So I, I know, like your school, right? You have short group discussions. Do you yeah. guys have that? So yeah. our sister, our sh- short group discussion is um, the same group. Like the group mates that you have will be the same for the whole year. So um, before there were ten of us in our group, and every time we would meet, it would always just be for SGD. So that's uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's really SGD, opening a case and closing a case. And then lectures are really um, infrequent lang. Like, if there are really hard subjects, we would, uh, they're hard topics, I mean, we would have lectures. But we don't have lectures all the time. And then for the lab part, it's um, every Tuesday and Thursday. So that's just to correlate everything that we have learned during the short group discussion. Okay, so for the most part, parang your learning is self-directed, and then you just like yeah. your profs are just there for consultation. Yes, actually, our doctors know when they when we do SGD, they don't really say anything. Like they're just there to give cues or to tell you that okay, read more on this, read more on this. Yeah, it's more on like independent. That's why we have independent study. Because that's where you spend most of your time in. Yeah, that's interesting. But like, how how do how would the grading system work given content on new subjects every um, year? Okay, so that is basic biomedical sciences. The other subject is PDR, which is um I think you have that in parang patient doctor relations. Yeah. We have that during first. Year. So that's our major subjects, and then. The one with the grading um, for BBS or basic biomedical sciences, we have an exam every week. So you only get one grade for one case, for each case. Because you open a case every week, diba. Right? So you have one exam every week and that's how they grade it. Then after a um, block, oh, because we have blocks, right? Yeah. We have blocks. So after every block... Um, you have a block exam. Um, modules under the block differ. So we have different kinds of modules per block. And it um, the duration of it also varies. So I can have block one now and let it be example three months. And then I can have block two and have it for like a month. Something like that. So it just depends on the load, I guess. And it's divided into systems. So... Mm-hmm. Example for, um, I think for first year, for third block, it was all like neuromuscular, it was um, special senses, and then it was musculoskeletal or something like that, neuro. Mm. That's very interesting because like, that's very similar to how the module-based schools do it, so uh, UPCM and ASMPH. Like our... Instead of the traditional na my individual subject in physiology, anatomy, etc., we have we are study it based on organ system. So GIT, uh, renal, uh, cardio, etc. Well, I think the difference now is the approach to the it's, it's with you you uh, you guys approach it from a problem based perspective rather yeah. compared to us. I think we we focus on like on the specific before going broad because we do get patient encounters early on. But like we were like we're more focused on the theory in our uh, classroom years as we transition more to the uh, clinical perspective later on. Um, actually, um, in our case, um, in CDU, um, we we just really explain a lot of um the anatomy, the physiology, and then the clinics. Actually, we have exposure for the different subject now, which was the PDR. Mm-hmm. That's when we ha- we go to the hospital and then just do history taking lang and then we are taught the basics like the vital signs and whatnot, but nothing nothing much per rotation. For, for second year now, what I missed because we are in this pandemic, um, 
actually, it's, it's really interesting during second year because they have rotation. So they really go to the hospital and every Thursday and then they really assess patients. So as early on pa a second year. You know, I, I like for second year now, we actually do differential diagnosis and then we have to tell them a lot of differentials even if we haven't even like read about it yet but then we have to like you know um, read in advance so that we can say something during SGD because during SGD that's like the bulk of your grade it's 20 percent so you really have to say a lot of things during short group discussions uh, so Parin, like because of the style that like they you're introducing the subject to SGD you're you're kind of forced to pre-read talaga before every class yeah that's that, that's what they said na um it's really repetition because you have to read before SGD, then you have to read after SGD for the synthesis, then you read again for your exam. So it's mm. three readings. Sabi oh, wow. so you get three readings like auto, like okay. naturally because of the way you guys uh, handle it. Uh, that's pretty cool. So so I so I guess like the the overall teaching the teaching philosophy of the school is like more of a hands off approach as opposed to the most schools were, were lecture heavy. In, in addition to that, it's like obviously like the school like relies heavily, like the school's teaching philosophy pushes you to study on your own initiative to, to perform well. Are there other opportunities that the school provides you? Like, can you uh, help in doing research for the faculty or are you allowed to do uh, clinical electives abroad during your clerkship? Um, actually, um, do you guys have research? We have research for first year and second year. So, uh, in, in my school, we have research that, uh, like that spans the three years. So like we learn the basics of research throughout first year. And then second year, we start developing our research proposal that we execute then in third year. Also, I think the difference between um, our schools then is first year, because they know we will be busy um, in the higher years now when we progress to third year and fourth year so first year they give us a descriptive type of research so so we already made our descriptive research for first year and then for second year we are not now doing an experimental research so that's mm. what they do so we do research in advance so that during clinical um in clerkship and you know we don't we are not bombarded with with that load anymore, I guess. And um, regarding what you said about abroad, um, I heard lang you can do your clerkship in the States or any other country, but then you have to be the one to work for it. So they don't really, I, I'm not sure, huh, but then they don't, um, they're not the one that recruits people to, to do an elective abroad. But then you have the choice. Like if you are a, an international student and want to, to do your clinics um, in the States or any other country, then you are free to do so as long as you, you uh, apply to, an, to a hospital that is, I think, um, accredited to them or something. And then, yeah, you can. I have, I have actually a lot of classmates now that are um, PhilAMs. And then they, they really... Uh, plan on doing their clerkship at the state. So as early as first year, they were already trying to process stuff. So mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, you just have to really know in advance if you're going to go there so that you can ask the admin if you can. Yeah, I think that's the case with uh, most, if not all, med schools here in the Philippines. Because uh, it's really hard to process all the paperwork. And I think you, you the, the norm is that you have to do it on your own. With, with obviously the, the transition, to um, the transition to online classes, what are what, what what are the challenges that you face during the initial transition, and then what did you do to overcome those challenges? We started. Uh, it it wasn't even the end of the sem. Like it was very timing that it was approaching out. We just ended block five, so block five was actually the heaviest block. So that comprises of digestive, respiratory, and urinary. So a lot of us were stressed, actually. Like, a lot of us were, were wishing for a, a day off or whatnot. Because right after our block exams, we immediately started the next block. So there wasn't any rest in between. <laughs> so a lot of us were tired. And then just, like, two days after, classes were canceled. 
and then we all had to come home and then everything was just and then some people did not even get to finish their research yet so um, there were a lot of um I don't know, I think everyone went hysterical for a bit there because we didn't know what we were going to do. And then our school wasn't really the most techy at the time. So we had Google Classroom, yes, but then um, they just started announcing and then they told us to make our, because we are, uh, um, about we study, we do independent study more instead of attending lectures. So they gave us the task sheets. So the task sheets are the things that you need to learn. And then you have to um, summarize what you have read in the book and then answer the task sheet, like like an essay yeah, for everything. And then that's what we did um, to end the semester. But then um, for PDR, which is the one that patient-doctor relations, of course, we cannot... Um, uh, we cannot meet with patients. So what they did, they just let us r write our histories for like pediatrics, for OB. That was during the end of first year, which was the start, uh, the start of the pandemic. And then for now, what they're doing is that we, it's it's actually more flexible now, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, we don't have synchronized lectures so far. I haven't, uh, we haven't had anything for the past month it, it's always pre-recorded lectures <laughs> so you, you you can watch the lecture um if you when when you want to when you have the time and then you can watch a lecture and then you go to sgd and then you take the exam so we still have weekly exams and then your lecture is just up to you if you want to watch it or not since um before a lot of people would really just you know, go to lectures because we have attendance for lecture. I don't know. So now, it's a bit more flexible, but it is really hard to focus because since it is, we have a lot of independent study, we have a lot of time for ourselves, you really have to be good at time management <laughs> or you will, I know, it's going to be hard to catch up. Yeah, that's so true because I like when you wake up and and stud and you wake up and sleep and study like basically in the same room. It's so tempting just to go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like I would watch lectures like in like when I wake up in my pajamas and then I would just like play lecture because the lectures some of the lectures are on YouTube like it it's connected to YouTube so you just play it and then you do other stuff and then like ambient noise. At, in the background and you you revisit it when you're when you're near the exam when you revisit the lecture <laughs> you're cramming but i guess like the the shift to like more having more independent study time like isn't i feel that you like is it as like is it that hard because like i, I, feel, I imagine it's like it's not that hard for you guys because uh, you're already used to like self-directed learning prior to the shift there. Eh? So I guess like you'd have an easier time compared to most of us here in Manila where we mo where most of our studying like came in the form of lectures and then we review afterwards. Yeah, um, before when I was in first year, it was really hard because I really thought I can't learn um, if I'm not sitting in front of a teacher writing notes and whatnot, but because of, I think because it's been a year since I started medicine, I, I've just gotten used to the, the routine, I guess. And then I actually found it uh, more helpful to do self-reading instead of sitting down at lecture sometimes. Because mm. some, some lectures, um, I don't know, they just, they last for so long and then maybe if you read the same if you read what he, that person is lecturing, you might understand it more. But then I think it just depends on the student as well. So there are really a lot of people still who are transitioning to this style in our um, curriculum. But for me, I think I adjusted so far. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, given your experience, like, you know, you took a gap year. Uh, before entering med school so like there was like a lull between your like life as a student in college and then like and then you know you went straight into the fire that is med school do you have any advice for um like students like 
uh, aspiring med students, specifically like med students who would be entering your school and with, with uh, like not expecting like the what kind of like parang like parang give any advice for students entering uh, your school and to how to adjust to this uh, kind of curriculum. Um, I guess my advice is really manage your time well, especially if you are very used to lectures. Um, it's it's really different, to right? So when you know you're you're attending a lecture, you really give it like your all for the lecture. But then now there isn't a, a lot of lectures, so you really have to read. And I think number one that you should really do is um, to read to read to be masipag when you read, because a lot of things will come out for the short group discussions. And then you you read on. Um, it, it is not advisable pala in our school to buy a book since um, the we are case-to-case -case basis. Um, a lot of stuff that are um, gonna come out, like example for anatomy, physiology, it's all like in different references. So you really, it's, I think it's better if you have a digital form of book so that you can just browse through it um, from time to time. And then... Um, 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 for since our school pala is case to case basis, um, just a heads up to everyone. We don't really have a good the the best na lang. We don't have the best foundation for biochemistry and uh, yeah for biochem. And for me, a lot of my biochem learning came from YouTube, which is Ninja Nerd. I don't know if you guys. I, I think Ninja. I think I think every med student has encountered Ninja Nerd <laughs> science. Yeah. <laughs> He is my savior for biochemistry, especially. Not about for physiology. Yeah, for, yeah. Um, coming from physical therapy, kasi okay. So, so every to everyone there out out there who is um a phys, uh coming from physical therapy, first year will be your best friend because first year divides like anatomy, physiology, so. You know, it was, it's, it's, it's a bit lax for first year if you're a PT, I guess. That's for me. Except for biochemistry, because we, we didn't have that. <laughs> and then, I know, SGD. Um, be good at SGD because 20% of your grade will come from SGD and never be absent during SGD. You can be absent for lecture, you can be absent for the laboratory. Just don't be absent for SGD, I swear. It will save your grade. <laughs> Okay, so uh, besides that, do you have any general advice to give to anyone aspiring to enter med school or is currently a med student? Um, I guess for me, um, just don't give up, I guess. And then even don't get, dis don't get discouraged, especially now, the bad, um, you can see with all the news that medical professionals are not valued um, in the Philippines. Just don't get discouraged, because in you know deep inside you have that passion, and then if you're, if especially if you're like me, you, you are coming from the province, and then you really see a lot of people, or like you see this big community um, with the scarcity of doctors. Like we don't really have a lot of doctors. Like um, keep that fire burning, lang. Na you, you really have to push it, and then just don't give up, and just just push. You can try now. And then afterwards, you get up, and then you study again, and then you try again for the next exam. I guess that's my really my advice for all of the med students out there. And then we and just know that you have like uh, this community, Deva, right? That we have a lot of relatable people that you can talk to, like our YouTube channels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's always I think for me it's really nice when I watch YouTube videos from fellow med students because it's something that I can relate to but mm. Yeah, I feel that um that's like something that's like been very common when with other med students that I've interviewed that like you know when times get tough it's important to remember your why and why you decided to enter med school. And I think that as long as your reason for being there is very strong, no matter how hard it gets, you'll still you'll be you'll be able to find a way to power through. And then, like you know, it also helps to have that um, social that 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 um, social security net to like you know that, that to catch you when uh, in your at your low points. Because uh, you know, like when when you're feeling tired, it's like really the people around you who will pick you up. 
Yeah, that's so true. Like, especially now because we uh, because we have SGD, diba? The people that you will be with for SGD will really be your best friends. So you will be with each other with each other through everything. And yeah, just maintain good relationships. And then um I hope all of every one of you on in the batch as well, like help each other. Because I swear, like in med school <laughs> we have to help each other out. Yeah, that's so true. Because like there's there's sometimes I think there, there's a toxic mentality sometimes that people are so competitive in med school and I find that that's that's like a pointless mindset. Because at the end of the day we're all going to be Call colleagues naman in the hospital eh. like and we're gonna we and it's better to develop the relationship now diba? so that yeah. like you know foster that relationship so that we work better together once we're out and about in the real world helping patients and, and like at the end of the day what matters is we help our patients to the best of our ability and then that and like it, it doesn't matter like you know if um if one person is performing better than you because like what what matters is how well you're learning diba? Yes, I totally agree. Okay, so uh, moving on, like, uh, how would you describe like uh, the campus culture in CDU? Parang, uh, what what's a how would you describe the student body that that you're that you're a part of? So, um, in my school, um, a lot of people actually since um, there the um, there are aren't a lot of choices, I guess, in C- in Cebu where to study med. But then, one of the top choices, I guess, is CDU and CIM. And a lot of people from my school really are, um, what do you call that? Like, they are daughters and sons of, like, businessmen in Cebu. Yeah. <laughs> but then, even if they're like, yeah, they, 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 I think they, they are really hardworking, all of them, because a lot of them are... Um, especially now, like a lot of them are top of their batch in different schools as well, well in Cebu. And it, it can really be intimidating at times to be surrounded by um, such um, smart people. But I guess, ano lang, just, just do your best. And, and I think the culture, because a lot of people are Phil Amps in our school, um, I don't know, I think... Um, English is the language that you should be good at. Because and then of course you have to be good with public relations as well. Because a lot of students are are what they call us are foreign students. Like we had a Thai student, we had mm. have a Niger, a, yeah, a Nigerian student. We have a student from Ethiopia. We have a lot of those. And then we, I think we also had students from um, Taiwan before. But then. The community here, for especially for foreign students, um, I think they are very welcoming for the foreign students in our school. And then for us Filipino students, I feel like everyone's just really mature na and um, yeah, they they are all trying their their best. And then what I what I noticed ha, for my batch lang, like what what we use what you said before, like there isn't much of that mindset that's like we need to be like higher than you know someone yeah, yeah. and i think that's what i appreciate about about cdu like everyone's just so humble everyone's just so chill like even the top of our class she's really just chill like she she doesn't show that she's she's pressured or she doesn't really show that oh you know i have to be top one or whatnot like she's really just chill and she helps out when you want help so I guess that's a good community. Like it's a really good med community, and then we there are only a few of us. So I think there are only like a hundred fifty to two hundred students per year. Mm-hmm. So a lot of you guys will know each other, and then you all ha- are in one floor. So in CDU there are five floors, and the top floor, which is the fifth floor, is for the med students only. So a lot of you guys will really meet each other and then it's really nice that you can really approach everyone whether or not that person is a higher year or not. So yeah. Okay, so like a sort of like so from what I'm my understanding, there's a quite a large international student community at CDU. For like for the Filipino students there, are they mostly from the Visayas area or do you have your fair share of students like who came from uh, Luzon and Metro Manila? 
Oh yeah, uh, about that one. Yeah. There are, I think, half of our class actually right now. There are two hundred. Uh, there are one hundred eighty of us now, and half of our class come from different parts of Visayas and Mindanao. And I think mm-hmm. the the one that one of my groupmates actually is from Palawan. So, mm-hmm. diba, there are still students that from Luzon or from Panay or something, and then they're here um, in CBU. So, but really, I think most of our class or half of our class comprised of a lot of people from like Cagayan, from um, Bacolod. We have a lot of Ilongo classmates, and then I I'm the only one from my region, from Eastern Samar. But there are a lot of other like Bohol, all of the nearby um, places in Cebu. Uh, is it like mainly because they took their undergrad at CDU or like in the local area rather like? Wala naman, like, are there a lot of like they took their undergrad in Manila tapos they came back to well, actually, the... we have um we ha- I have a classmate actually that took um her pre med in Manila in USD I think and then she studied in CDU so mm. there are still a, yeah I think it just depends on, on on the person as well I don't exactly know her reason why she studied in CDU but yeah but. There are there are people like there and not in my batch there was one and then mm-hmm. all of the rest were from Bacolod. They studied undergrad in their places and then they decided they want to come to CDU or they want to come to Cebu in general and then Cebu was their choice. Yeah, there there are a lot of cla- a lot of my classmates that are not from Cebu. Um, yeah, or <laughs> like that. Okay. So, like, how's the org culture? Like, what are the different orgs that you can, student orgs that you can join while as a med student in CDU? Um, in CDU, actually, you have, we only have two orgs. So, that's mm-hmm. CORE and ALSA. And then, I think the ALSA, there is a lot, there is ALSA in everything. I think it's AMSA. For yeah, AMSA. It's AMSA in Luzon. Ours, it's called ALSA. But then... Um, we also have core, so core is the the one that's more focused on medical missions and whatnot. And then Alsa is more focused on like the community, right? Um, being um, together, you have a support group, and I think those two those two organizations in our school um, are the ones that you can join when you study in in CDU. And um, just to expound, I guess, on the org culture, like. What I said before, like, in our school, the president or the dean actually encourages everyone to balance both the cur- extracurriculars and their academics. So if you're actually sporty, they it's actually plus points for you during interview because they really like sporty people, I guess. Um, they, um, because we have, like, Medlympics, we have University Week, so... Uh, our department is very competitive <laughs> in sports <laughs> in those events. So everyone's highly encouraged to have a sport or to join a sport. And of course, it's, it's part of the, just part of your, ano na lang, real R&R or your relaxation during med so that you don't stress yourself out just studying for the blocks or for any exam for that matter. Yeah, I find that like sports is like a common outlet for a lot of med students. Like even here in um in the Luzon Med School, so like you know we have a Palarong Med every every year, and obviously we just we didn't have it this year due to the pandemic. But like it's super competitive amongst the big med schools. Even in like my school, na like even though we're small, we have our fair share of UAB athletes, so we're uh, oh, yeah. a lot. We're like we're super competitive, even though even though we compete against the bigger schools like UERM and USD, and like even like amongst the med schools outside of Luzon, I think like Western Visayas State is like super competitive. Like I interviewed my friend from there, like there, like she like uh she talked about like how competitive their school is, and like once once it's med Olympics time, like they really get serious. Yeah, I was gonna yeah we have med Olympics for like hours. Do you compete against, do you guys also compete against the other med schools in your area? Yeah, during Med Olympics. Actually, for West Visayas, I think we, ha- we are in the same area somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of heard about them before when there was this dance competition for Med Olympics also and then they joined. Mm-hmm. So I guess 
we are part of them, the, the Visayas region, since there are only a few med schools in the Visayas. Okay, so um, having been a med student now in your school for more than a year, uh, what's one thing about your school that you really love? And this can be abstract or not abstract. Okay, um, what do you like about my school um, so far? I guess for me, um, it's not the most stressful environment yet. Well, when I was in first year, because now we like, um, there are a lot of independent studies, so you, you have a lot of time for yourself. And I guess that's one of the things that I really love, because I really like to be alone with my thoughts, and then just, uh, just be alone reading um, about stuff. So for me, that's why it's not the most stressful environment and um yeah i think that's what i can think why i love um cbu and then the doctors are very nice actually like the doctors are always so approachable you can really talk since you have this face-to-face -face, um sgd every uh, three times a week and then the doctors shift the back like you can have a different doctor today different doctor next week so you you get you get to be close with the doctors like they're the, instead of like having this big gap now you are always so shy to approach doctors here they actually are the ones that approach you they actually ask you and then we have a mentoring program so that's a good thing so anything that um that concerns us you can just really contact them through messenger or whatever platform that they want us to use and i think that's one of the very important things because especially now in this pandemic the right? um I have actually classmates that are stuck in Cebu. They didn't get to go home. And then our mentor is always like um, looking out for him. She's always asking, oh, are you okay? How, how are you coping up with everything? So that's a good, that's a good thing to have in med school, especially because diba, um, we're always constantly studying, we're under pressure, we're under stress. So yeah, just the community is really nice. So. Mm. So as a follow-up to that, it's like, uh, what's one thing you wish your school would, would add to, to the campus or like within, or like something like in the local community? What's one thing that would be, you wish would be added within your remaining stay in school before you like you graduate? For me, no, um, it's not related to like future for me, but yeah. for the first years na lang, hopefully, I, I just want, I guess, the, the biochem part. Because <laughs> it's really hard. Like learning about biochem by yourself is hard. So I just wish that we had a more comprehensive background for biochemistry. And oh, in our school we don't dissect cadavers. Oh, what do you guys? What do you? What do you guys? Do you guys do the digital anatomical models instead? Uh, cadavers are actually pre dissected. I use the plastinated, the plastinated <laughs> models. Cadavers, but they are already dissected. We don't do. The uh, it's the pro it's the props who dissected it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. The technicians that dissect them, and then I think I I just missed the what they call that the the spark plug of that because isn't it like an intro to like surgery and whatnot? So I think yeah. that that's one of the things that I wish I got the experience in first year to dis to dissect or yeah. To, to get into those things and the biochem. I guess for future lang, um, <laughs> I guess this is for uh, in general, ha? because a lot of our announcements really are announced late. So hopefully in the future, like uh, um, we the announcements are more advanced so that everyone can prepare as well. Okay, so before we end this interview, Bay, is there anything you'd like to promote uh, of other than like obviously your YouTube channel is like uh, your your any like business of your friends or your own personal business, uh, social media, any advocacy. Um, actually, um, at the start of the pandemic, I had this advocacy with my friends, which we donated to um the far flung barangays in our city, which is Magka Urusa Drive. So you can check out Magka Urusa Drive on Facebook. Um, we are still doing, we have a lot of plans still to donate to the less fortunate, especially now for December. And yeah, I have uh, my YouTube channel, Base Capades, and I am also on Instagram at Base Capades. And yeah, I guess that's just it for, for now. 
Okay, so if any of you guys view, watching are interested, I'll link them down in the description. So uh, feel free to check those out. So uh, thank you so much, Bea, uh, for taking the time to take part in this interview. Uh, I wish you all the best this coming school year. And uh, I guess I hope to work with you again in the future on uh, future videos. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me here. I am very honored.